today I started writing one list and then I realized that actually I had a better idea, so we're doing this instead. Let's just say I'm the boss. I think it's easy to forget when you're from a Western country that we all speak a different language even though it's English. So, the same language. What I mean is we use words differently. This year I did a lot of traveling to America and I definitely found myself lost in translation a lot. And in turn, I found myself misunderstanding a lot of things that Americans would say to me. And today I'm gonna to go through 10 things that Americans say versus what they actually mean. I hope this will be helpful for you if you plan on visiting America. And indeed, if you're American, perhaps this will give you some insight into how, hmm, how do I put this? Differently, you use language. Close one. Before I get into today's video, do check out the brand new merch in the merch store. Here's me, I'm wearing it right now. Uh, yeah, they can see that. Oh, we're very cynical today. Also, do be sure to subscribe if you haven't already, otherwise the next time you put on a white swatch, you're going to find that you've dyed everything blue or pink, depending on your least favorite color. And on with the list. Coming in at number 10, it's a sentence that symbolizes a lot of other sentences. It took forever. Trust me, it didn't take forever. It may have took a longer time than anticipated. Americans do tend to exaggerate things a lot. So take with a pinch of salt the following sentences. It's the funniest story ever. I could have died. It was literally a bear. I will definitely do that. Definitely means probably. Definitely doesn't mean definitely. I'm not sure precisely why Americans exaggerate stuff a lot. Maybe it's because they're like the human clickbait of the world geography. I definitely struggle to clickbait some of my videos and I think that it probably comes really easily to the American YouTubers, so yeah. The next one is how are you? How are you does not mean how are you. The response to this has to be something very generic like fine or I'm good, I'm great, how are you? Don't get stuck in one of those perpetual cycles where you go hey how are you and they go I'm good how are you and you go I'm good how are you sugar. In Dublin we say how are you which is essentially the same thing it doesn't mean how are you it's just the greeting. Also, if they say have a nice day, they don't actually care how your day goes. They're just, it's just a thing that they say. Americans don't care. No, they do care sometimes, just not in those instances. There is some exceptions to that rule. And that brings me to the next point. When an American responds out of kind to that question, you know, there's something up. If they say, I'm doing okay. They are not doing okay. That means the opposite of they're doing okay. I'm doing okay means something has gone wrong in their lives and they wanna talk about it. And definitely if you hear them say, I'm not so great, you potentially need to call some sort of help in this situation because that is a cry for help. If someone says I'm doing okay or I'm not doing so great, you, 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 you need to take that seriously. Alarm bells should be going off everywhere. As I've talked about before in this channel, Americans do tend to be very open with their emotions. So if they say something like, I'm doing okay, or I'm not doing so great, you probably need to delve a little deeper because yeah, they need to talk about it. It's not that serious necessarily. I don't know, maybe I've picked up this American exaggerating thing along the way. Basically, I'm not doing okay means you should probably just ask what's going on in their lives. So dramatic. The next sentence that I found really confusing that American people say is the term, I could care less. What? You could care less. So if I said, hey Brooke, I saw your ex-boyfriend over there kissing Becky. They're the most American names I could think of right now. And Brooke says, I could care less. What she's trying to say is that she doesn't care. It's confusing because it sounds like she's trying to say, I, I could potentially care less about what you're saying, but in actual fact, I, I care a little bit more. In the case of Becky and Brooke, she's probably lying. She cares. She cares that Chad's over there kissing Becky. I forget the name of the people involved in my analogies sometimes. But Chad's always a jerk. 
In Ireland we say I don't care, which I think makes more sense. I could care less is a very confusing term. The next thing Americans say that's super confusing is yeah, no. What? No, yeah, no, no, yeah, no. <laughs> If an American says, yeah, no, they mean no. And if they say, no, yeah, they mean yeah. It's basically the last thing that they said <laughs> is what they mean. Americans tend to be really cordial, so they're trying to be agreeable when they say the first thing, but they actually mean the second thing. So you could go, can you put that over there for me? And they might say, yeah, no, they're not gonna put it over there for you. It's confusing though. Yeah, no, yeah, no. The next word I've noticed Americans say a lot is the word challenging. So I'll ask somebody how they're getting on with their new job and they might say it's challenging. And again, I think this comes down to how optimistic American people are. In Ireland, if we were doing something that we were struggling with, we'd be like, oh, I can't do it. It's terrible. Oh, I don't know what I'm doing. Where in America, you guys say it's challenging, which means it's driving you demented. It's literally my worst nightmare. I kind of like the it's challenging thing because it implies that it's a challenge that needs to be overcome, a hurdle which you can jump across or over. How do hurdles work? You jump over hurdles. But yeah, challenging implies that there's something major that they're struggling with. If you say, how's your relationship? And they say, it's challenging. Yeah. The next thing Americans sometimes say, and I don't know why I picture a really camp guy when I say this term. I love that for you. Okay, when Americans say love, that can mean like, but it can also be a complete and utter lie. When an American says, I love that for you, you really need to listen to the last two words in that sentence, for you. This implies that they really wouldn't do whatever you're saying you do yourself themselves. They wouldn't choose to do whatever you're choosing to do themselves, but they're also trying to give it a nice outlook because they know you're going to do whatever you're going to do anyway. I love that for you. The next one is when Americans use the word friend, they don't actually mean their friend, they mean somebody that they know. So in Ireland, if we call everybody that we've ever met our friend, that'd be implying that the whole country of Ireland is your friend because you know everybody by like three degrees of separation. But in America, when they say my friend, they just mean somebody that they know. If they say best friend, they probably mean somebody that they know and like. Best friends are we. The next thing Americans say, which you should definitely take with a pinch of salt is, it's really close. When an American says it's really close, they mean by car. As we've discussed before, Americans drive everywhere. So if they're implying that you should walk there, it'll probably take you about a year to get there. If an American says it's really close, they mean it's unwalkable and it's probably about half an hour away, which is technically speaking really close in America. When I've been in America, I've definitely asked for directions and stuff and somebody will say, it's really close. And then they'll proceed to tell me 75 different directions to where I wanna go. It's not really close, it's quite far, but it's all relative. And the number one thing that Americans say that means something different is, that's really funny. If you have to say it, it's not funny. The biggest indicator of whether you've said something that's funny is if a person laughs. And I've only come across this in America. That's so funny. We're gonna make that pancake, guys. That's so funny. Only Americans will use the term, that's really funny. In Ireland, if you say something that you think is really funny and the other person doesn't think is really funny, they'll just look at you like... <coughs> we place a high emphasis on humour, so you better figure it out fast. But yeah, that's it for today's list. Today's video goes out to the Karmic Goals crew over on Patreon. Sometimes I feel like I don't give the guys over on Patreon enough credit. There's a whole community going on over there. And these are the people who have made all the adventures that have happened on the channel possible. The names of these people will be in the description box below. And if you see them in comments, give them a boop. They'll know what it means and it's just an acknowledgement of how great they are and how they are the glue that holds this entire channel together. So thank you to everyone over on Patreon. That's it for today's list. Feel free to engage with one another in the comments in a respectful way and I'll see you later in the week. Bye. Oh, hi. How are you? That's an existential question. The next thing is, the next thing to take with,